No problem. All right. Okay. Please Thank you very much. I think You're we're right. going to be going live right now. Let's let's just go live. So so let me say a special good evening to everyone. Special greetings to all. Uh, I don't know where you are, uh, but wherever you are, we're glad that you are where you are, if you're in a good position. But above all things, we are happy to be alive and well this evening. We give God thanks for the fact that he has spared our lives to see yet another beautiful day. We are alive and well. We are holding fast um, and we're keeping his promises. We're believing and trusting his word. Uh, I am so glad this evening that we have with us. Last week at this time, we had close to 60 different individuals as we had joined with uh, the North Bahamas Conference. This week, we are back to our regular programming. Uh, joining us, we have uh, all the way in Jamaica, we have uh, Brother Othniel or Pastor Othniel Lamy. <laughs> And uh, his mother is there as well, Sister Matheson, from the East Jamaica Conference. So they are our guests this evening. As well, our regular rose among us is uh, Sister Sonia Shippey. She is with us this evening. And I expect that we will have joining us pretty soon uh, Elder Beam, who is always with us. He may be running a little bit late, but if he does come in, we will welcome him in. So let me go ahead and ask, uh, firstly, Sister Shippy, how, how has it been? How was your day? How was your week? Good, my day has been good. Week is good. Keeping busy. Yes, everything is good. And I'm excited because there was someone I was praying for for a long time and prayer has been answered. And today was a wonderful day for me. And oh, I said, X, oh, so, 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 so someone you've been praying for yes. uh, is, is, is on right now, is doing well, answers yes. the prayer. Yes, yes. So, uh, so I'm so happy about that. Yes. Wow, 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 wow. wow. So that Amen. brought joy to me. <laughs> uh, thanks for that. Now, Brother Lammy, Pastor Lammy, how are you, my friend? I'm fine, Pastor. I'm fine. God be praised. All right. Uh, so tell me, well, how has it been for you? Didn't you guys have an <clears throat> earthquake or something? I heard. Yes. Yeah was a minor one but it was not close to origin it was further towards the west oh further towards the west okay beautiful yeah, you further east. Well. nobody that you you haven't heard of anyone hurt or any damage uh, done no only my thank god only my friends they have friends who are hurt but i'm not f f familiar with those ones okay but, uh, okay. okay but beautiful. i'll be praying okay god be praised for that all right. Um, I think uh, Elder Beam is 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 trying to get in, so we will we will wait for him to to join us. But aside from that, you guys now we for our viewers, our viewers who are uh, maybe at home or at work or in the hospital, in the prison, wherever you may be, we will have periodically individuals joining us. Joining us right now is one of our elders, Elder Taylor, has joined us. And uh, we're glad that he is in uh, with us this evening. Uh, thank you, Elder Taylor. How, are you, how have you been? I'm good. I'm good. Thanks for having me. It's good. All right. All right. Happy to have you, Doc. Happy to have you. Thanks so much for coming in. Uh, you're going to make things a lot better this evening with your presence. So we appreciate that. To our viewers, we want, I was about to say to you, we are at Chapter 62 in the book, Desire of Ages, The Feast at Simon's House. And that's on, on page 557, the original writings of Ellen G. White. So I'm going to be sharing the screen as we do each evening, uh, each Wednesday evening. Uh, for those who would like to know, Matthew 26, 6 to 13, Mark 14, 3 to 11, Luke 7, 36 to 50. And the one that I like to read this particular story from, John 11, 55, to chapter 12, verse 11. That's where we're coming from this evening. All right, we have some individuals in the waiting room. Uh, let's admit everyone in. Uh, uh, and then we're gonna be formally beginning with prayer. I know one person there is Elder Al Beam. I, I know him. Uh, there's a Galaxy S7 that's joining us. I am not sure who that is, 
But whoever is using that Galaxy S7, at some point, we'd like for you to declare who you are so we know who you are. But I think they're still connecting. Uh, technology has its way. All right. So, uh, Ella Taylor, uh, I don't know mm -hmm. if you've joined us before. Uh, we want to see your face, though. You're hiding your face. Yes, yeah, you're hiding your face. You bring the camera down. Excellent, excellent. Your wife thinks you're very handsome, so we don't want you to be hiding your face. All right? So beautiful. Show yourself. Uh, Elder Taylor, we have with us uh, a young man who I think is going to be a great pastor one day. He's joining us from Jamaica, uh, Pastor Lamy. Uh, he's from the East. Which part of Jamaica are you from, Elder Taylor? Montego Bay. Oh, you're from the West. All right. Yeah. The, the songwriter says they come from the east and west. East from the but west. Yeah. I'm from the central section, so I bring all of you together. How about that? Okay, that's all wonderful. Right. <laughs> Elder Beam, happy to have you. Happy to have you. Uh, happy to be here, Pastor. Good evening, Elder Taylor, sister. Good evening, Elder Beans. Good to have you. Oh, good, good. Right. good to have you. Mr. Shippy, how are you? And um, I see us Neil there, and I don't know who's the Galaxy S7. I am good. asking, who's that Galaxy S7? Um, I I don't mind you being there, but if I don't know who you are, it might cause me to be nervous, uh, and and we don't like nervousness. But in any case, please uh, reveal yourself um, verbally or visibly. Uh, but without any further ado, let's get into our study this evening. This is an interesting study yes. that we're looking at this evening, following uh, in 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 what we've been studying for the last couple of weeks. Believe it or not. Folks, viewers, we are at chapter 62. So mm -hmm. in all intent and purposes, we've been studying this book for 62 weeks. So it's been a year and 10 weeks, Sister Clark, since we've been studying this book and we are at chapter 62 right now. So we're, we're thankful um, that, that we have gotten this far and we're learning so much every single week. So let's get into the study tonight. Why don't we ask uh, who's jo Ella, Ella Taylor, you're joining us for the first time. Why don't you pray for us, please, uh, to begin uh, this lesson? All right, let us pray. Loving Lord and Father, we give you thanks for your love, your mercy, and your grace. We give you thanks to your Lord for granting us another privilege where we can come to worship you and to give you praise in the middle of the week. Lord, we thank you for the technology that you've given to man that though we are in a different place in the world, we can still gather together and just to lift your name in praise and in adoration. So Lord, we give you thanks for the knowledge that you've given to man. We thank you, dear Lord, for health, for strength, for food, for shelter. Lord, we thank you for the written word. And as we get into the word, not to study about the life of you and how your healing power there in Bethany with Lazarus and Mary at Simon House, Realize, Lord, your power that you heal a leper and his gratitude was to show a feast in, to show his gratitude to you. But yet there's always those that will come with skepticism and those who always feel that they can always pick apart your truth. Lord, we thank you that you give us the opportunity tonight in a world in which we live where so much chaos is taking place around us. But yet our focus can be upon you and not at the things of this world. So we ask now that the Holy Spirit will be with pastor as the lead out, be with every participant tonight who's listening, <clears throat> wherever they are, Lord, I pray that your spirit may be there. May they have a rich understanding of your truth. Now I pray thee in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen, 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 amen. amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Elder Taylor, for that. Uh, again, everyone, we want to introduce you to our panelists this evening. Sister Clark, Elder Beam, Elder Taylor, Sister Shippy, and uh, Brother Othniel, who we call Pastor Othniel from Jamaica. Um, let's get into the study. By the way, before we get in, we always ask this question. Um, what was your impression of the study, uh, chapter 62? What was it like when you read and portions that you read? How was it? Anyone? To me, uh, one of the first things that jumped out to me is to see that here it was, the, the religious leaders, they went to the feast to see Jesus, but didn't go there was to really hear the truth. The go there was to really to look for a mistake that will make so they can use it to go against him. 
And to me, I find that very fascinating. That here it is, you hear about someone who's doing all these good work, but you didn't go there for the good. You go there to look for something bad in that person. Trying to find a way to trap him, right? Yes. All right, good. Uh, anyone else? Um... And my takeaway from this was to be a follower of Christ. Not only do we have to sit at the feet of Jesus and learn of him, but we have to take on his character. We have yeah. to allow him to be our Lord and our Savior. And our character must be transformed and be like that of Christ. Because we see when our character is transformed, how we can look at things differently. We see the difference between Simon and Mary. So it's important that we have that character of Christ where it's compassion, tenderness, mercy, and most importantly, love. And we see that love was mentioned so many times through the chapter. Genuine love. Genuine love. Yeah. Mm. You, you, you underscored the word genuine. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Anyone else? Any thoughts? Uh, on the passage. Yes, um, Pastor, I, I also realized that um, it, it's not it's not power or position that makes you saved. You see, um, with Judas, with Judas, um, you know, he was a treasurer, you could say, of the Jesus and his and his disciples group. He was a treasurer, and that could be you can say the minister of finance, <clears throat> minister of finance or you know, the second highest position in the group. But he still was nowhere close to Jesus, you could say, because though being physically close to him most of the time, his spirit, his mind, his body was just um, not there, not connected. So, I mean, it's not position because he can walk and tell the world that, hey, I'm the treasurer for Jesus and his disciples. But, I mean, if you're not living the life, you're just, you're just not there. Uh, so, so you're saying proximity to Christ physically does not necessarily yeah. mean that you are close to him. Amen. Amen. That's it. Wow. Good, good point, brother. Good point. All right. Um, anyone else? Uh, Elder Beam, Sister Clark, Elder Aldith, welcome. Anyone else would like to share any thoughts? I, I believe the Bible makes mention of secret sins in the light of your countenance. And here we see, as Sister Shippage so aptly described, the love of Jesus where he has information that is heavy on the participants and their, and their various agendas. But the way that he handled the situation teaches us a lot about tact, T-A-C-T. And it teaches about love about, for each other, meaning that we can use information on each other to tear each other down, or we can actually utilize it to build each other up. And here we see Christ, even with people with various agendas, still choosing to build up the participants rather than take them down with their secret sins. Mm -hmm. But even, good point. That's, you see, it's a perfect picture. Tact, and I'm glad you, you, you spelled it out, T-A-C-T, -T, not the one that's T-A-C-K. Uh, he was very tactful in how he related to him but he was never in any way trying to make him feel comfortable in his position. Uh, he didn't condone it and he didn't condemn him. Uh, he just pointed him in the right direction. It's a perfect, it's a, it's a masterclass in how we ought to deal with people who go through challenging and, and have challenging situations in their lives. All right, anyone else before we start sharing the screen? And try to get. We have about thirty-one questions. Good night. Good night. Good evening. Yes. Good evening, Pastor. Yes, Elder Livingston from Jamaica. How are you? Not bad at all. I just joined him, so I could not answer the question that you asked. I don't re really know what you were discussing. The topic. All right. No problem. We're discussing chapter sixty-two, the feast at Simon's house. But, you know, you're welcome to ask questions, make comments, anything relevant to what we're discussing. But we're happy to have you. Uh, thank you for joining us as well this evening. We're just about ready to go into the questions now. Uh, okay. Are we ready now, team? I will listen and then ask questions. And um, apologize for last week. No, you're the fine. Prior. <laughs> yes, you know, I have some grandchildren around me was giving me trouble, so I did not hear what I should do. So that oh, is why I did not pray. No, no, that, that's, that's the part of technology. That's the part of what we're living in the COVID world. Uh, yes. Nothing is going to go perfectly as we deem perfect. 
We're going to always have challenges, but we work through it. All right. I'm so thank you time. for being here with us this evening. All right. Time. Let us get, right. get to it. I'm going to be sharing uh, my screen uh, so our viewers could actually share with us. Uh, I might not put the questions. I'll just ask them. Well, let me see. Are you guys able to see the screen? Yes. All right. Excellent. So we're at chapter 62, page 557. Uh, the first question that is there is, although Simon of Beth Bethany was accounted a disciple of Jesus, acknowledge him as a teacher and hope that he might be the Messiah. Uh, we fill in the blanks. Simon had. What did Simon have? Anyone want to take a bite at number one? What's the question, Pastor? Well, it's a fill in the blank uh, for number one. So it's 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 asking us to continue. It, although Simon of Bethany, number one, was accounted a disciple of Jesus. And this is critical. Acknowledge him as a teacher. Uh, so Simon saw Jesus. He felt that he was a, a disciple of Jesus. He acknowledged Jesus as a teacher. And he hoped that Jesus would be the Messiah. Uh -huh. Simon had him as a what? He had, but he had not accepted him as savior. And so ah, uh -huh. we need to understand that the term Messiah and savior are not synonymous, Pastor. Oh, correct. Right. Correct. Um, you know, a, a lot of times we use this phraseology. A lot of us want Jesus to be our savior, but we don't want him to be our Lord. Oh, Lord. You know, it's along that same line. You know, okay, save me from my sins, but don't tell me anything about what I need to do. Just leave my life alone. Let me be who I want to be. So, so all those things. So let's look at the question itself again. You would think that if somebody says they're a Christian, right? And they acknowledge Jesus as a teacher, right? And you hope that he would be the Messiah. You would think that you're well on track and you should be doing very well. But in effect, we see right here that it was saying to us that even with all of that, Elder Beam, you said it. Could you repeat what you said? Yes, that the term Messiah and Savior are not synonymous. A Messiah was a promised, uh, a promised leader that would relieve them from the Roman rule. And a Savior is, is, is who Peter chose him to be from the very start. Do you remember Peter, he asked this question, whom do men say that I am? Yes. And Peter says that you are the son of the living God. And he said, blessed art thou, Simon Bar-Jonah, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my father, which is in heaven. And then you hear him calling, was it Nathaniel? And he says, I saw you under the fig tree. Uh, was that their reference? Yes. These men accepted him as savior. They didn't need ev any evidence, evidence that he would free them from the Romans. Yes. And you have to wonder sometimes when we come into the church, I'm not going to judge anyone, but what are we really looking for? Are we looking to attach ourselves to Adventism to get status and stability in life? Or did we really come there for whom the minister said was our savior? That yes. means that later on, if we hit upon any issues or people rub us the wrong way, then like a political campaign, we won't leave, if that makes That's sense. Right. That's right. And, and as you mentioned that, that, that Elder Beam, Sister Shippey, in her summation of what the chapter meant to her, she hinted at the, the, this particular portion where it says his character was yes. not transformed. His principles were unchanged. So this was, you could, you could do all these things, like you said, Elder Beam, you could be in the church, you could serve the church, do all of these great things, be in the church for a long time, hold all the positions in the church, but if your character, Sister Shippey, is yeah. not transformed, then your principles will remain the same. Yeah. They will be unchanged. Yeah. Right? Yeah. All right. So, so let's look quickly at number two. How had Simon shown his gratitude to Jesus? Now, somebody, I think Elder Taylor mentioned this in his prayer. How had Simon shown his gratitude to Jesus on a previous occasion for curing him of leprosy. I'd like our viewers to know and understand that Jesus had done something real big for Simon. Yes? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, leprosy was no ordinary thing. It was it was it was a disease that 
that would cause you to be abandoned. You had to be away from everybody else. You're ostracized and you were looked at. At one point, we used to compare uh, uh, that to AIDS. AIDS has become a little bit more, ac not acceptable, but, but the way we are able to handle it has become a little bit more acceptable, more fashionable, if I so can say. But it was similar to that kind of thing. You know, you were untouchable, so to speak. And, and Jesus cured Simon, who was a Pharisee, cured him of leprosy, and, and he wanted to do something good for Jesus, right? Or so we think, yes? And so he had, what did he do for Jesus and his disciples? If you're a feast. Uh -huh. He prepared a feast. Now, he didn't say just a meal, but he prepared a feast. So, so all kinds of stuff was there. He, he pulled out the best that he, he brought all the China out, the same ones that your parents have in the cabinet that you can't touch. Those came out at that particular time because it was a very special occasion. So he prepared a feast for them. And then not, any, anyone wanted to comment on this particular thing, the feast itself? Well, the Pharisees are, were very rich. Um, they did not just have religious status or mm -hmm. they also had economic status. Um, God made Palestine the crossroads of the then known world. You mm -hmm. had Asia, Africa, and which other continent? Northern Europe intersected in Palestine. It was a trade route. And just to come to Palestine and to trade in its markets, you had to pay the people who lived there to, for even the place to put your table down. Yeah. And so, so these Pharisees and the people there were rich. I mean, not simple rich. You're talking about Nicodemus. Mrs. White says he could support the whole city of Jerusalem from his coffers for 10 yeah. years in a row. His, his, his net worth was estimated around $10 billion in today's dollars. The guy was super rich. And these Pharisees, they were not walking around with light pockets. And so was Simon, powerful, rich, and influential. So he had a, he, he had a huge banquet. You, yes. know, you, know, you know, it was great. All right. So let's, let's talk about number three now. At that time, when he had this feast, why were there so many people at Bethany to see Jesus? That's, that's question number three. Why were there so many people at Bethany to see Jesus? Because from my understanding by just reading this, they, they came to see him because he just um, not too long ago raised Lazarus from the dead. And yes. at the same time, the feast of the Passover was close, but was close, getting close. So it was two things, I, I believe, the curiosity of hoping to see Lazarus be raised from the dead and in the feast. So you just incriminate all because so many people was at Bethany at that time. Yeah, and some of the folk had heard a little bit about the threats that were hanging yes. over his head. Yes. So some of them came out of uh, sympathy, <laughs> according to the reading here. Some of them came out of sympathy and others came out of curiosity. We, can, we, we see that happen in everything, everyday life. It's a common occurrence even today. People will go out to see somebody, not because they even know them, but they may have heard something about them. So they're curious. And there may be people who think that, oh, someone has done great things, but now he's going to be led as a lamb to the slaughter. So they came out of sympathy uh, uh, to see the person. Any other thoughts on that? Something serious was happening here, Pastor. At yes. one time, the Pharisees accused Jesus of, in our, in our island vernacular, working Obia, or what, wherever island you're coming from, you will understand, witchcraft. working witchcraft. And he said to them, when you go into your dark rooms, you, you do whatever. But if you continue to accuse me, then you will commit the unpardonable sin. Do you remember that? Yes. Blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. So these Pharisees, a lot of them, not all, but some of them, that's why Jesus was so harsh with them, calling them a generation of vipers. These guys were messing around with the occult. Yes, they were. They had learned it in Babylon. And they were playing around with it. And they were driving out demons or whatever. So they were not impressed with Jesus driving out demons. Because you know <laughs> that this whole thing about, what do they call it, what do they call it again? Exorcism? Yes. Yeah, first a demon has to go in and then you call him out. But you're asking him, please leave so I can put on a show. So yeah. they were not necessarily impressed with that. Hold on. 
And that's why Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. Not one day as if he was in a, in a, in a coma, as Sister Shippey knows as a medical professional. Not two days, because they have opened cribs and found finger marks on the stone where people raised from coma after two, sometimes one to two days. He waited how long? Four, three three four. days. And the body was rotting in the Palestinian sun now at 110 degrees. And he comes and he raises Lazarus from the dead. So you got to wonder about Simon now. Who raises somebody from the dead? Why would he still be doubting that Jesus is the Savior? And it shows us that there are people in the church who are just not interested in God's agenda. They're just there because it's a good social gathering and there's something to be had. He gave irrefutable proof that he was the Savior of mankind by raising a man from from the dead after three days. But yet still Simon was not confident that he was the savior of the world. Now, now that's 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 a very good point that you just mentioned. See Sister Shippy? Sister Shippy, did you want to say something? No, 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 I just said amen, yes. Because sometimes okay. we're influenced and you see, it's the same thing with, well, we, we'll get further to Judas and, and, the, and the disciples. Sometimes yeah, we, we're we have to get by to him others. Tonight. Yeah, we huh? have to get to him tonight, yeah. All right. So, so as you mentioned, Lazarus L. Beam, let's let's jump to number four that talks about as Lazarus had not the people were, came to see Lazarus, right? Mm -hmm. um, because they couldn't believe that this man was resurrected, and they had right. sympathy for Jesus. But when they, when they came around, they wanted Lazarus to tell them what happened. What you know, we've had so many movies made about people who said they had an, an experience, they died and went to heaven and came back and. And they're telling the story. This 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 passage shows exactly how it refutes unequivocally that that no such thing happens, right? No, because here is Lazarus. He he. The people came wanted to hear from Lazarus to tell him what was it like being dead. <laughs> now, what did Lazarus talk about now that he was alive? Because he didn't talk about that. What did he talk about now that he was alive? According to the lesson. Right. Yes, is it brother uh, Othniel? Go ahead. Oh. Okay. Right, it was saying, um, but Lazarus did have a wonderful testimony to bear in regard to the work of Christ. He had been raised from the dead for this purpose. With assurance and power, he declared that Jesus was the Son of God. All right. So, so in the first, the few sent lines before that, it said that he had nothing of this kind to tell because everybody wanted uh, above. It says right here, many expected to hear from Lazarus, a wonderful account of seeing Mercy. witness after death. They were surprised that he told them nothing. It's not that he, he didn't want to tell them, but he had nothing to tell them. Why? To tell. Yeah. Yeah. Why, why is that? Othniel, go ahead. It's somebody else, um, Pastor. It's not Othniel. Somebody else is. Who is that? Is that okay, Sister Livingston? Sister, yes, yeah, Sister Aldith. Go ahead. Um, I was just about to tap on what Brother Lamy said that Lazarus had nothing to tell because Lazarus have no idea what happened. <laughs> it is those who look around. It is those who were there pretending. I would say pretending to mourn with the sisters. They are the one that have the witness because they were there and see what happened. The sisters also could tell. They could say yes, because if we remember in the account, when Jesus come, one of the sisters, I think it was Mary, said to him, you know, if he was here, he would not die. And they go as far to say, by now he think. So it's only the sisters and those around could really tell what happened. But Lazarus have no idea. And until today, Pastor, we realize that people preach spiritualism, that the dead can come back and tell what's happening. Mm -hmm. But in Lazarus' case, nothing like that takes place. And, and we have scriptural proof for that, right? Oh. Ecclesiastes yes. 9, yes. verse 5 and 6 says... Yeah. The dead know not anything. Oh, their love and their hatred and their envy is now perished. So it was very clear through the life. That's why for me personally as a preacher, when I preach the state of the dead, Lazarus is my main go-to passage because 
it clarifies all these uh, different uh, theology and doctrinal positions on the state of the dead. This is a very good one. All right, anything else on that before we move on? Pastor, I want Adventists to, to remember that we must take a stand on the state of the dead. Yeah. No matter which cultures we are coming from, we must not baptize Christianity with paganism. You know, I go back to Jamaica recently and the way that we hold funerals, we are holding it as an ostentatious occasion when we are behaving like Egyptians. That is going right back home to Mother Africa where paganism ruled. And these are the things that God is asking us to take a stand on. The dead know nothing. So why bury them in a casket made like a Benz and, and give them this and give them that? Right. We need to go back to the Bible and stand on the Bible only because Mrs. White says, if we do not understand the clear and live the belief in what God says in Ecclesiastes 9, verse 5 and 6, she says, in the last day, Satan will prepare a deception for us that will blow our minds. He will send mm -hmm. grandma and relative, apparently, an apparition to come back and convince us that the Sabbath is not real or Adventist faith is not real. I heard this from the other side and all those type of stuff. So this is not something to gloss over. It's very important. You have to wonder as well, why were the people of God asking Lazarus, what did he see after death? Mm -hmm. Well, you because know, they, they had that they, great curiosity. Yes, they, ahead, they, they were contaminated in Babylon, just like yes. we are contaminated by our cultures and Obia and African beliefs, and we are taking it right back into the church, and we should not. All right, but Ellen Taylor. I would question that they, I mean, they have a form of godliness, but it was not really God's followers. Because in the first place, you have to understand something. They, I mean, they, they present themselves as if they are part of the family of God, but they were not. Because that's why they come to expect Lazarus to speak to them, uh, as I said, out of that experience. Yeah. But the Bible tells you, and if they study all the way back from Genesis, we lost, you shall surely die. And, and, and the, right there in the book of Ecclesiastes, make it very clear, the dead know not nothing. Yeah. Even the love and the hate perish from that moment. So really and truly, when they come to expect to hear something from Lazarus, you know that, number one, they don't believe in, in, in the gospel. Because if they didn't believe in the message from Abraham, because even for them coming out of Egypt, they know that because Moses, I mean, Joseph give them the, the, the example. When you return back to, 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 to Canaan, take my bone with you. So these are the same people that come out of there, so they should yes. know that. Yes. There, there, is, there is no communication with the dead. Yes. But, but, you know, we have this strange fascination and the devil knows exactly what he's doing. Because if he can get us to believe that when you're dead, you're not really dead, mm -hmm. he will have, have won a significant battle. And, uh, and, and that's the challenge that we have to, and I'm glad that you guys spend some time on that. All right, now, as a result of that, as we look to the other questions, number five talks about what were the priests and rulers concerned about? We're getting close to the point now uh, uh, about Judas, etc. What were the priests and rulers concerned about? Should Jesus return or not return to Jerusalem? What was their concern? Number five. Can someone read that for us? Okay. It said the priests and rulers saw that their hold upon the people was still weakening, and their rage against Jesus grew more bitter. They could hardly wait for the opportunity of removing him forever from their way. So not just to remove him, but to remove him forever wow. from their way. It, it, it's not just, okay, we're going to banish you to Australia, no, or something like that. No, we're going to make sure that you're not seen or heard anymore in our lifetime. So they were totally to eradicated. Plot. Yes, yes, Othniel, go ahead. I was just saying that's total eradication. Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah, if they could wipe out his family and everybody else, all the seed, everything that dropped. Nothing they heard of from this man again, ever. <laughs> that was exactly. a hatred, though. Exactly. Yeah. That so, was so a hatred, I, you know? As a follow-up to that, then, number six and number seven talks about what were the plans that they had, that the priests and the Pharisees had set up for Jesus, and also the plans that they had for Lazarus. That's number six and number seven. What were their plans? So, it says a council of the priests and Pharisees was called 
since the raising of Lazarus, the sympathies of people were so fully with Christ that it would be dangerous to seize the opportunity to seize upon, upon him openly. openly. So the authorities determined to take him secretly, secretly. and carry on the trial as quietly as, as possible. That was it. They so, hoped so, that... Yes, go ahead. Oh, it says they hoped that when he that when his condemnation became known, the fickle tide of public opinion would set in their, their favor. favor. That they want to destroy him totally. So, right. so, very good point. That's total eradication. Elohim right. said this earlier, and I held the statement and kept it for this moment. It was a political move uh -huh. that they were doing. So, for them, they, they calculated, Sister Shippy, the reality of the situation, and they figured because of the fact that so many people came out to see him, that means they he has some some sway. People respect yes. him, people love him. Mm -hmm. So, so, so what did they it? feel that the best way to take care of him was? Secret. To take him secretly mm -hmm. and then have a speedy trial as mm -hmm. quietly as possible. Now, now, if if that do you see that happening even in our church? Oh yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> well, we haven't changed, have we? Now, even worse than that, even worse than that, and, and I know that is bad, but what did they plan to do with um, Lazarus? They plan to get him no, no, killed. No, let me ask this question now. Why do they need to kill Lazarus? Oh, Pastor, is they really want testimony? to get rid of Lazarus because Lazarus is the testimony. testimony. Lazarus is and the really. evidence. Yes. So and they Jesus. want to get rid of the evidence. They want to get rid of the testimony. So that is why they want to get rid of Lazarus. Because Lazarus yeah. was a constant reminder to them that Jesus rose from it's, the dead. Amen. Amen. Yes, that's that's amen. the perfect response. Any other response to that? I think that's, that's a great response. Anything else? No. All right. Yeah, that is true. They re they realize that you know what? If we secretly try put Jesus on trial, get rid of him, uh, you know, set him to die, and whatever we do, um, we still can't succeed because there's one guy who who was dead and was resurrected by him, and so we need to make sure we get rid of him too. Yes, brother Arthur. Yes, Jesus says. I, I am the resurrection and the life. And so for them to prove, uh, which it, it has been proven by raising Lazarus. So to get rid of that, that altogether, they have to get rid of Lazarus. So they would not be any proof that Jesus is resurrection and the life. All right. They, that is so true. All right. So now we're going to transition to what happens after the situation. While they were plotting and while they were doing what they were doing, what was the scene like at, at, at Simon's house, at the feast? What was it like there? And this is a very interesting portion of the study tonight. Okay, it scene? says, it says at the table, the Savior sat with Simon, whom he had cured of a loathsome disease. He was not just the resurrection, but he was also a healer on one side. And Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead, shows that he is also the healer, the physician, and he's a resurrection, whom he had raised from the dead on the other side. Martha served at the table, but Mary was earnestly listening to every word from the lips of Jesus. Must be Jesus. Mm. All right. So, so hold on now. Uh, uh, hold on now. We're seeing here at one table. Mm -hmm. At mm -hmm. one table. Mm -hmm. A class. Different categories, class, and types of people. Right. Mm -hmm. You guys mm -hmm. notice that? Yes. So, so, yes. so you have Simon, who was Elder B made it very clear and rightly so. The Pharisee that was rich, right? Right. He was also sick, but he was cured. Yes. Right. Yes. And then you have Lazarus, who was a friend, who raised was from the dead. The dead. Yes. And he was raised. Then yes. you have two sisters, right? Martha, Mary and Martha, who served at the table. Mm -hmm. But then you have Mary, who likes to sit at the feet of Jesus and listen to what mm -hmm. he has to say. These people are in one group at one table. Now, right. what does that say about Jesus that he's able to draw all these different kinds of people mm -hmm. to him? 
He was the middle man. Yes. It shows that the, the power of Jesus and his reach yes. that, it, that he could sit with in a palatial palace with the king and he could sit underneath a tree with the peasant. Right. And, and he can find a place where all of them could feel comfortable, yeah. not the because of the people around them, but because of his presence. True. And it shows that Christianity is popular. We must not, <laughs> we must not make any assumptions. There are all kinds who comes to church. And listen, God doesn't have a problem with it. He's going to use every opportunity to save all. And while we come there with all of our agendas, he is working through the Holy Spirit, through his agenda, to utilize our bent to sin. And he's going to work through that door and try to bring us to him. So God will accommodate all agendas, all people, all little, all little plans. He will sit there and accommodate all of it if he can save us all. Yes. Perfect. And as you talk about Hello Taylor, go ahead. What I find so fascinating, and I think that helps me in my spiritual growth, is that to see Jesus sit at that table. And Jesus who can read the heart. Because oh, yes. he know the Pharisees was there, and he know what their purpose was there for. He know yes. that even, even um, Simon who prepared that feast, he oh. know where Simon where oh. Simon's heart is. Yes. Yes. And then he look yes. at Martha. He know where Martha's heart was. And look at Mary. That Mary come with everything to pour on him and he know that mary have that deep love that mary would if it come to the point would give his very life for christ for his appreciation what christ have done for her because you know where christ That's have brought right. her from and yet to see the religious leader who was there call himself promoting the the, 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 the the message of god but yet they were there for their own purpose and their own glory because they feel christ is taking the in other words Christ is taking the spotlight from them. Christ yeah. is taking the praise from them. And sometimes you'll find that even today in the yeah. church, as yeah. pastors and leaders, sometimes we get fickle because somebody else comes in and can speak better than us. I can do something better. We say, oh, 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 we don't silence that person. That's and it. forget that, wait a minute, we're there to lift the gospel of Jesus Christ even higher. Yes, yes. Perfect point. And as you mentioned, as a great segue, into what happened. So while they were all sitting there, everybody with their own agendas sitting there, something strange happened. They started to smell. It wasn't that the food was burning or <laughs> what, but all of a sudden they started to, a certain scent came around. Yes, um, right. What was happening at that time? Uh, what happens is the shipping. I said, you, you smell the fragrance from, from the, the, the alabaster. Alabaster bar. It was broken. Now, now, I know we don't have a lot of time, but you guys got to know this is one of my favorite passages to preach from. So it tempts me every time when I think about what happened here. Now, this woman, that alabaster box of ointment, uh -huh. according to studies, it cost an entire year's wages. Uh -huh. mm. yes. Now, don't miss that. Uh -huh. It was not just going out and working or you get it as a, that costs a lot of money. Think about working yes. for an entire year. And then taking mm. that 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 money to buy uh, a, a perfume, that's and that's what yes. she did. And then she broke it, right? Number nine says she broke it, poured its yes. contents, all of it, uh -huh. upon the head, and that on made the you of Jesus. Uh -huh. And not only that, while she was there kneeling, she started to weep and cry, mm -hmm. and that's tears true. started to come down. And with the tears, yeah. she used it to wipe his feet with her long flowing here. Yeah. No, mm -hmm. no. Understand how devastating this must have been for, for, for Simon, because Simon, who is a Pharisee, he mm -hmm. did not have any belief that a woman should be even in the same room that he was in. And, mm -hmm. and now you see a woman come in and with all this excitement, she break, break the box of alabaster ointment and pour it on the screen and she did all this stuff and causing all the commotion. Mm -hmm. How this uh -huh. must have made him feel. But that's not the part that shocked me. Mm. The part yes. that shocked me was how Judas responded. Judas! Oh, oh Jesus. Judas was Jesus. 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 He walked the finance Jesus. man. He was the <laughs> treasurer. He held a purse. He carried mm -hmm. the bag. And yes. he knew what the mission of Christ was. But I, mm -hmm. I, I don't want us to quickly jump on Judas. No. Did Judas have a point? 
Because yes. here was a woman taking a whole year's wages, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And using it to wash Just the food. All that, right. Would and and all that kind of stuff. When there were poor people outside there who were hungry. So, so, but that's yes, what that's how we got this. so <laughs> this point I'm trying to make, and I want you to, to expand on that, all of you, is this. There are times when the devil, <laughs> watch this, the devil will always find a good reason yes. to entice yes. you not to do good. Mm. Amen. Did, did, did you catch right. what I just said? Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. devil will always yes. find a good reason to entice you not to do good. Not Remember, to do good. It was, it was a good idea to take the money and, feed and the poor. buy food for poor people. For the poor. Yes. Correct? Yes. But the reason um, Mary did what she did was because Mary was being even more than more than just living in the moment. It was a prophetic yes. action that Mary took that none of them who were there even recognized. Mm. She recognized that nothing is as costly. Not It can cost enough S and knowing the Savior for burial. Mm -hmm. Now go ahead. Tell me what your thoughts are uh, relative to this point and Judas's opposition. I think Judas was a thief from in the mind. <laughs> I believe he was dishonest and he was grudgeful. Jamaica talk from in the mind. Mm -hmm. Even though he was a finance, he was taking out what he won that he should have given to the poor from in the beginning. So I think he was grudging. He was grudging Mary um, from in the beginning. Are uh, jealous. That, he, that she did not give him that amount of money, not only for the poor, but to put some in his pocket. All right, hold on. <laughs> Sister Matheson, there's a point that you mentioned that I don't want the viewers to miss. This is how the devil operates. Remember, he doesn't tell full yeah. lie. He tells half truths. Oh, yes. Right. So, so watch <laughs> this, ah. is what, this is what Judas oh, said. Right. Why is this? Why was not the cost of this put into the bag that I carry. I carry. Ah, yeah, right. Thank you. Yeah, it, it, it's you. it's it's not just okay. Why don't we put that in the treasury? No, no, no. Treasurer. He wanted it to go in the bag that he right. carries. Why? Right. Like you make and he, can he, wants. <laughs> he would then be able to mm. take from it what he wanted yes. to benefit himself. So right. his Mercy. goal was not for the benefit of the poor. No, totally. He had a greater a greater desire. So that he could benefit himself. Did I did I capture it right? Yes. Yes. That's it. That's yes. exactly yes. how I got it. Yes. Okay. That's so that's that's that. the problem. That's why we got to be very careful with with. Yes. with listen, nobody is going to believe a blatant lie. Mm -mm. You have to mix it with some truth. And so you got to watch what people do, what they do. Judas did what he did, and it made sense. But if we're honest with ourselves. Thinking about it, you realize that he had ulterior motives. All right. Anything else yes. on that? We have to try to get going. But anything else on that? Anyone want to share? Yes. Um, One thing I wanted to say, Pastor, we have yes. to be careful not to be influenced by people who think they are superior, because that's yes. what, what happened with Judas and the disciple. Number eleven. Oh, uh, that's that's what it's. Yeah. He says, yes. Go ahead. Judas had an eye opinion of his own executive ability. As a financer, he thought himself greatly superior to his fellow disciples, and he had them led to regard him in the same light, and he gained their confidence and had strong influence over them. So when we don't know things for ourselves and we don't search the scripture for ourselves, we go by what others say and influence our behavior and our thinking. I mean, this has to do with money, but it's the same thing when we're talking about biblical stuff that we need to study for ourselves and not be influenced by others. Listen, there's a very powerful yeah. point that you mentioned, Sister Shippy. Here it is. Look at the words that were used here. Ellen White puts it very clear. Judas, number one, had a high opinion of his own executive ability. The guy was smart, okay? Mm -hmm. He had a, he, he, he may, may have a, what's the term, Elder Beam, the highest um, term in business, he's not an MBA, but he may have had some kind of terminal degree in business management. Yes. All the certifications behind his name, he had PhD a higher opinion master. executive ability as a financier. He thought himself greatly superior to his yes. fellow disciples. Now, 
it's good to accomplish things in life, but just because you have a higher level of education or accomplishment, you cannot think of yourself greatly superior to your, those who are working with you. Fellow means that we are on the same field. We're in it together. And not only that, but he led them to regard him in the same light. He saw himself a certain way and he led them to see him in that way as well. And he had gained their confidence and, had a and as a result of that, he had a strong influence over them. So whenever he yeah. said anything, they would listen to him because he had bamboozled them into believing that since he's so smart, anything that he is saying makes sense. And this right. is the part that really hit me. His professed sympathy for the poor deceived them and his artful insinuation caused them to look distrustfully upon Mary's devotion. Oh my master, yeah. Mercy, they, they missed the point, I'm coming to Elder Beam and Othniel. They missed the point of what Mary was doing yes. because they trusted what Judas, Judas who right. Judas thought he was. Mm. Go ahead. Elder Beam? Go ahead, Othniel, I'll let you go first. No problem, Uncle. Um, as you read that that last section, I want to mark out those three words. Um, professed sympathy. Yeah, it's just something you you just say. It's not necessarily true. It's not necessarily factual. And artful insinuation. That's total deception. Yeah. And another thing I, I I like to highlight is the distrust upon Mary's devotion. You see, it's not just that. That's a good point that Judas, you know, because of how they looked upon him, they would just take what he says that, hey, he's a smart guy, what he says, you know, it can work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the fact that Mary, Mary's status was not that a good one. She didn't have much of a good reputation mm -hmm. because if we recall, Jesus had to cast demons out of her okay. seven okay. times. Mm -hmm. So seeing that, hey, this woman could have <laughs> lost it again. You could have not been so, you know, 100 as we would say in Jamaican terms. She would not have been in her right minds at that time. She could um not be so stabilized. But right. then Judas was always the smart guy. So hey, the smart guy, as opposed to a woman regularly possessed with demons, I would definitely choose the smart guy. So that was a advanced advantage in yeah. Judas's deception of the disciples. Good point. Excellent point. Elder Beam. I'm going to segue up what Othniel said. I'll utilize what he mentioned last, which was Mary's devotion. Mm. Um, let's note something here. That bottle of perfume, it was, like a, it was like a heirloom. It was something that you would pass from one generation to the other. Mm -hmm. you, take that, you take that ointment and you put it in there and you seal it. Notice that she didn't pour. She right. broke mm -hmm. the bottle. Right. And, so hold on. Let's take, let's take this into account. This is not a bottle of perfume that you open, use, and reuse. That's mm -hmm. it. It is no. a one-time use. It is sealed. It's fermented. And mm -hmm. the thing only grows in value because the ointment gets stronger and stronger. So Othniel is right. Mary's devotion in breaking that bottle and using it upon Jesus was the ultimate test of the room and what they thought of Jesus. Yeah. Mm. One-time use. And it was really meant in Palestine. Its greatest use was to anoint a very rich dead man or woman. Mm. Let me repeat that. The ultimate use of that bottle was to anoint the very rich dead person. So when you're taking them to burial, you smell nothing of the decaying body. Mm -hmm. So by her breaking that bottle and anointing Jesus, it was the ultimate sacrifice, as Sister Shippey said. But it was also a one-time use. So why would you give him so much if he's not worth that much? Mm. And it tested <laughs> the last one in the room. Because is he really worth that one-time use of the animal? Yes, yes. And, and also, also Simon would have known <laughs> the cost of that. So, oh, yes. so it, would, it, it affected them on so many different levels. Very... Very good point. Now our time is is almost at at, a, at an end, so we have to 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 get down very closer to the end here. Now there's something that they had a contention 
Because they were saying, you know, why do we waste all of this now? And Jesus made them understand that it was critical for us not to wait until someone dies. Elder Beam alluded to it. We want to make caskets that look like cars and caskets that look like all kinds of things. When the person is dead and can't enjoy it. But, but Jesus was saying he would rather have us give, you know, there's a song that they sing, uh, don't scatter roses after I'm gone, give them. I said them. it to me. I said it while I read this story. It's, it's, it's exactly what is happening here. Jesus was saying, that's what I wanted. Mary gave Jesus what the disciples never gave him yeah. all this time. They've been with him all this time and they never realized that there were times when Jesus felt lonely. They didn't realize that Jesus just needed someone, a comfort, consolation. They did not see that in a few days, his body was going to be broken. Uh, they didn't see that. And as a result of that, as a result of that, what Mary did caused Jesus to feel very emotional as well. Uh, because somebody actually recognized, understood, and cared. Uh, anything else you want to share? Because there's something I want to put run to at the end relative to Mary as well to tell us how we have to be very careful. <coughs> the people you know, that I said the one thing that I, I like it the, the importance yes. of the Holy Spirit. Go ahead. The Holy Spirit had planned for Mary and she had obeyed his prompting. Yes. Inspiration stoops to give yes. no reason. And on seeing presence it speaks to mind and soul and moves the art to action. It is his own justification. Mary. Inspiration stoops to give no reason. Oh, no, yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, praise God for that. That 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 is a number fifteen answer there as well. Beautiful. Anything else before we jump down further, way down? Uh, yes. Or, yes. Um, Pastor, the, you you mentioned that um, you mentioned that um, Mary. Mm -hmm. Um, right. You mentioned that Jesus felt felt lonely. And that the, his disciples had been with him all this time, but yes, he felt lonely. You know, you can't, you can't treat a pinch, or you can't treat a patient if you don't know what the sickness is. Yes. yes. He, and and the disciples were there with Jesus all along, but they still did not recognize that hey, this man is to die for our sins, and this man is to you know not take this earthly throne, but he's the heavenly, he's the heavenly king. They still did not come to the full realization of that, so therefore they could not be with him in that sense to say hey we understand that you have to die we understand what you have to go through and therefore be closer to him than they would naturally be but mary now even though mary did not use say words but they as elder b mentioned that that oil was to be poured upon a dead body that was prophecy in itself you know she was saying that hey this man is to die and this soil is going to anoint his dead body and even then the disciples still did not understand mm. so so yeah, that, that that that's a powerful point there. Pastor, I think it also I think it also speaks to giving her all, as Sister yes. Shippey says, upon the altar of sacrifice. Yes. yes. We yes. are still jeered and we are still reminded as Adventists that we came from a confused beginning. Do you remember what it was? The Great Disappointment, 18 October. 22nd, 1844, we sold all our farms and stand there waiting in a field because Jesus was to come down. No, granted, of course, we misinterpreted the prophecies. Yes. But Mrs. White goes on to say that God holds us in great regard because we were ready, even with a misunderstanding, to give up all, sell everything, and prepare for the coming of Christ. And we must be in that readiness of mind. We have set up house too much. We are more a movement than we are a church. And when the time comes that God says, lay down all upon the altar of sacrifice, sell, give away, fund yeah. certain things, do what you need to, because my if we're holding on to things like Simon and the others in the room, we'll miss that point of Jesus' is coming. Very good, very good. I'm going to ask someone to read for me uh, the on the line section here, number 21. Then I'm going to read, uh, I'm going to point to one last thing and then we get ready to close out. Uh, number 20, Sister Shippy, you got it? Okay. Christ values acts of heartful courtesy. When anyone did him a favor, 
With heavenly politeness, he blessed the actor. He did not refuse the simplest flower plucked by the hand of a child and offered to him in love. He accepted the offerings of children and blessed the givers, inscribing their names in the book of life. Amen. Powerful. So Jesus appreciated yes. the smallest to the greatest act of kindness mm -hmm. that we could bestow. But we have to be very careful. Judas walked with Jesus. Mm -hmm. it, it took a woman, Mary, who was, you know, an outcast in so many ways. And I won't even get into one reason why Simon was so offended by her. That's another story. Um, mm -hmm. But but there was something that jumped out at me uh, towards the end of the lesson. Um, remember, by the way, we also need to point out that Simon, as we read later on in the story, Simon's heart was changed. Yes, after the parable, yes. After Jesus shared the parable uh, about the debtors, right? Yes, yes. Simon realized that, listen, that's why we have to, we say it so many times, we cannot look at people in church, their reaction to God, mm -hmm. and tell them how they should react to what God did for them. True. Amen. You know, that's the same thing like what Simon and Judas and others were telling the woman. Don't use all of that uh, at that expensive perfume uh, on Jesus. No, she was doing it because Jesus had done something great for her and she was expressing that. We yeah. should allow people to express themselves to God based on what God has done, done for them. them. Amen. And, and that brought Simon, he touched his heart and he was changed okay. from that. Now, there's something I need to mention and that, that's answering number 29. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read this and then I'll ask for your final. I know we've gone past the time. Ask for your final uh, uh, statements and we, we're going to pray. When to human eyes her case appeared hopeless, Christ mm -hmm. saw in Mary capabilities for good. He saw the better traits of her character. The plan of redemption has invested humanity with great possibilities. And in Mary, these possibilities were to be realized. Remember, Jesus doesn't see us as we are. He sees us as we can be. Yes, mm. Through his grace, she became a partaker of the divine nature. Amen. One who had fallen and whose mind had been a habitation of demons was brought very near to the Savior in fellowship and ministry. Here it is. It was Mary who sat at his feet and learned of him. Yeah. It was Mary who poured upon his head the precious yeah. and Man, bathed you know it's with her tears. You know Mary, Mary stood beside the cross and followed him to the sepulchre. Yeah. Mary was first at the tomb after his resurrection. It hmm. was Mary who first proclaimed him a risen savior. A risen savior. Amen. Amen. Mary, as we knew her, that woman. Who yeah. sleeps around with demons? Yes. All this kind of mm. done. If Mary had walked to the doors of the church, we would not welcome her Come in. Her. Mercy. Give, as a matter of fact, we would not give her a position as an officer in church mm. because mm. what she had done. Mm. But look at Mary, and then finally, Ellen White says, "Jesus knows the circumstances of every soul." Amen. Amen. Talking to the viewers, you may say, I am sinful, very sinful. You may be, but the worse you are, the more you need Jesus. Amen. Amen. He turns Amen. no weeping, contrite one away. He does not tell to any all that he might reveal, but he bids every trembling soul take courage, freely, freely really pardon. pardon all who come to him. For, for, for forgiveness and restoration. and restoration. Amen. That Amen. is why I am a Christian. That is Amen. why I serve Jesus. Amen. Because of what he sees in me and what he thinks I can be and not what I was or what I am and what the world may see me as. He, what he sees, sees in me. Good in me. He sees Amen. The good in you. He sees Amen. The good in all of us. Amen. Any final thoughts Amen. as we get ready to close. Amen. Amen. All right. I think I think you guys you got you guys are ready for us to close. Now we've gone past the time. 
Uh, we have some prayer requests coming in. Elder Garbutt requesting prayers for his home country of Belize. You know, Belize, as you know, is being impacted right now with Hurricane Nana. Um, mm -hmm. The next hurricane that's coming on is called Omar. It's going to pass. Oh, 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 hurt I, I, I heard that name and I thought about it as a boy. <laughs> no, no, it's not going to hurt anybody. That one is going to be all right. Uh, gonna I'm going to pray especially for that. Uh, so Hurricane Nana is causing some disruptions in Belize and, and other countries, other islands coming in uh, south of the United States. So we want to pray for Belize tonight. Please note that. We're going to ask you to pray. Uh, Sister Anthony is requesting prayer for her family. Elder Brown, both elders are requesting prayer for their entire family. And then Sister Richardson as well is requesting prayer for Polly. We've been praying for Polly and for Pauline and for her family. If they're watching, if they're not, we're gonna be praying for you as well tonight. And we also wanna pray for continued success of the church services and especially our audiovisual and communication team that we continue yeah. to uh, project the love of Jesus Christ and souls will be won for his kingdom. So we're praying for that tonight. Any other requests that you may have? And then we're going to ask to do a chain prayer, which means we're going to do a short prayer, sentence prayer, lifting of what the Lord lay, lays on your heart, and then we'll close out tonight. Melrose Matheson, uh, is that you, Sister Matheson, uh, for herself and her family? Uh, requesting prayers as well. All right, are we ready to pray now? Now I need to give you all a number so you can pick up, all right? So I'm going to give Sister Shippy across the screen. Sister Shippy will pray first. Uh, uh, Elder Taylor will pray second. Uh, Elder Beam will pray, pray third. Uh, Brother Othniel will pray fourth. Sister Aldith will pray fifth. And Sister Clark, if you choose to. If you don't want to, We'll just skip and go ahead to the next person. But our viewers, we're going to be praying for you at this time. Please join us as we pray. Amen. Jesus, what a friend for a sinner. Jesus, what a lover for the soul. Friends may fail us. Foes may assail us. Jesus, you are Savior. Hallelujah, what a Savior. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you this evening for your words, your words of encouragement, oh Lord, reminding us of how we should be, how we should have Christ-like character. We should be merciful. We should have compassion. We should have tenderness, and we should have love towards one another. Lord, help us that as we study each night or every day as we study your word, let it not just be for knowledge's sake, but Lord, I ask that you be embedded in our hearts so that we can have a transformation and others looking on may see that we are walking with you. Oh Lord, we thank you for everyone that has been on this panel and on the line, Lord. Give us the blessing, give us the instilling of your Holy Spirit so that we can be a living witness in all that we do. Oh Heavenly Father, you promise that you will take care of each and every one of us. You said you know all our circumstances. So Lord, tonight we present to you um, those in Belize, who experienced the effect of the hurricane. We put before you Sister Anthony and her family, brother and sister Brown, Polly and Pauline, Lord, they're going through such medical problems, Lord, but we know that you're the great physician. You're the healing balm in Gilead, and there's nothing too difficult for you. So Lord, visit them, Lord. And as we, as they listen online, they're not of the faith, but Lord, we know that you can work miracles. Lord, we ask that you'll just touch them Touch them from the crown of the head to the sole of the feet, Lord, and give them a, a, a cure. Lord, we put before you our different ministries in the church, especially the AV department, Lord, our desires to spread the everlasting gospel to all the world. So, Lord, tonight, as we are through with our studies, let us, as we depart, not depart from you, but let us leave with that indwelling Holy Spirit, knowing that we have studied your word, and just like Simon, there'll be a difference in our lives. Lord, help us to have love, love for another. And as the sermon last Sabbath said, there are three things required of us, to do justly, to have mercy, and to walk humbly. So Lord, whatever I feel of asking you tonight on anyone's behalf, Lord, fail not to grant it unto us in showers of blessing with the forgiveness of our sin through Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. Amen. Amen.
Loving Lord and Father, we give you thanks for the privilege of coming before your throne. Lord, oh, know us, we are not worthy, but as we study your word tonight, you give us hope to know that, Lord, you have not cast none of us, but with a <clears throat> humble and a contrite heart, we come before you. You said, a contrite heart that will not despise, O oh God. So we come tonight pleading for the opening of your Holy Spirit upon your people. Lord, you heard these prayer requests that is gone up before you tonight. Sister Brown and Brother Brown requests prayer for, the, for them and their family. Likewise, Lord, we, Polly and her family. Lord, we know that you are God who is still here and answered prayer. So we ask, oh, Father, that your will be done. Where healing is needed, Father, may you grant it. Whether it's spiritual, physically, whatever it may be. Father, we ask that your Holy Spirit will continue to direct your people. We know, dear Father, we are truly living in the last days. We can see the sign and wonders all around us. Nature is crying out. Father, we can see the hurricane. Now we're in the hurricane season. And right now, those family members in Belize are facing the threat of this hurricane. But Lord, we know that you have the power over the wind and the wave because you spoke, Lord, and you calmed the raging sea. So we know you can do that tonight. So I pray, Lord, for all the, 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 the family, Lord, in, in the Bahamas. I pray, Lord, that the Holy Spirit will guide and direct, give them the peace of mind to know that they have, there's nothing to worry about, but you are still in control. Lord, I just want to ask that your sweet spirit will continue to lead your people in the pathway of righteousness. Because, Father, at times in this world in which we live, there's so many things happening, and sometimes we tend to question. But, Father, in spite of all the questions, help us to have that great assurance that Jesus is still today, yesterday, and forevermore, that you change not. And your words still stand true. And you demonstrate it tonight as we study your word, Lord, as you sit at that table. There was people from all different walks of life. And you understand they come with all different characteristics. But yet, you look beyond their fault and see their need. And I pray tonight, oh Father, that we'll look beyond our fault and see our need. Know that we need you to guide us through the pathway of life. So Lord, hold us with your mighty and I pray thee. I thank you, Lord, for Pastor Palmer. I thank you, Lord, for his ministry as he continues, Lord, to lead your church. Lord, may you give him wisdom. May you give him understanding, Lord, to lead your people in the pathway of righteousness. Father, we know that it is not an easy task, but with Jesus in the vessel, we can smile at the storm. So we ask, oh God, as we face the challenging times of life, May our life be so enriched in your principles and your precepts. Help us, O oh Father, that more and more we'll develop the Christ-like character, that those that we come in contact with will see Christ in us and led to glorify you. Grant us, Lord, the spirit of patience. Grant us the spirit, Lord, of long-suffering, of gentleness and peace. Because, Father, sometimes we can become brash and we become harsh by the way we speak and the things we do. But, Lord, help us always that we may be a true reflector of your character. Be with us now, dear Father, and be with your people throughout hurt remote is bound. Lord, give them the comfort and the hope they now seek, because, Father, we know the world is looking for peace, but true peace only coming from knowing Jesus Christ, who is the author and finisher of our faith. Grant us now your, your blessing, we beg, in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we are so thankful for another opportunity to come before thee and to seek your face asking you for grace in times of need. Father, we have learned from the lesson studied tonight that we can come to you with our various needs and possibly we carry the baggage of our agendas. But Lord God, you will still forbear with us and you will show us mercy and have patience with us as you form us, not according to the potential that we have, but the ones that you will form in us and through us. And so, Lord God, we thank you for such hope. I pray for the names mentioned tonight, the various individuals, their needs, their hopes, their wants and desires. I pray, Lord God, for the islands of Belize and neighboring, um, neighboring areas, Lord God, that may be affected by this hurricane. I pray that you may keep and bless and watch over and overshadow, Lord God. I ask your father that every person represented in participation and their churches, that you will bless us as bodies, as families, 
We are in need of thee, O God. These are trying times in which we live. And we need you every day, every hour. Lord God, we remember those who once walked in this way, or family members or children or others who may have departed, but Lord God, they have not departed from you. And so I pray for those various family members and associates and friends who once walked in the way and they do not anymore. Oh Lord God, I pray for our church members, our children, the youth. I pray for the aged and their needs, Lord God. I ask that you will forgive, that you will bless, you will uphold, you will restore. And Lord, that you will invigorate us as we go through trying times. You have promised that you will never leave us nor forsake us. And we hold you to your word and thank you for hearing our prayers. And whatever I failed of asking of thee, please do not fail to grant it unto us. For we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And, and so, Heavenly Father, we, we tire a little longer, oh God. <clears throat> we want to give you thanks, oh God. We want to give you thanks, oh God, for your grace, for your mercy, oh God, for your tender mercies and living kindness, oh God. But that has kept us throughout this soul rendering discussion, oh God. Oh God, we have read, oh God, how Judas, how his thoughts were in, in contrast and in opposition to that of your holy ways. We read how the ways of Simon, oh God, we saw how he saw himself as the rich guy. We saw how he saw himself as the one doing everyone a favor and did not truly show appreciation of what you did for him. Oh God, we see how, how the disciples did not fully understand your purpose even then. But oh God, we, we recognize that Mary humbled herself, oh God, and emptied and gave her all and emptied that alabaster box. Dear God, Help us to be like Mary. For God, we all are sinners, oh God. You may not have cast demons out of us, oh God, but oh God, you have helped us in some way whatsoever. Lord, you have kept us throughout today. And we are still alive even now, and that is enough for us to give you thanks for. Mm -hmm. So oh God, help us to outpour. Help us to give, to give you our all. Help us to empty our alabaster boxes. Oh God, as we go from day to day, oh God, may, may you continue to shine upon us. May you continue, oh God, to to help us to live the life that comes for righteousness. As for our viewers in the, in, on YouTube or whatever platform they may, they may be viewing from, oh God, I'm sure that each and every one of them, oh God, they have something, oh God, that they want to bring to you. They may have some struggle, oh God, that they want you to fix. So God, I pray that you will take each and every one even now. And I pray that you will work a miracle in someone's life, that someone can get a testimony through their test even now. Oh God, I pray that you will you will just keep us all in the hollow palm of your hands. And, oh God, I pray that when all is said and done and you shall come in the clouds of heaven, may we not run to the rocks and the mountains and say, fall on us and hide us from him that, that sits upon the throne. <clears throat> but, oh God, may we run to you and say, this is our Lord and Savior we have long waited for and he will save us. Oh mm -hmm. God, I pray that until then you will keep us true and keep us faithful. Until then, oh God, the song says, my heart will go on singing. Yeah. Until then, with joy we will carry on. Until the day our eyes behold the city. Until yeah. the day God call us home. Oh God, I pray that soon and very soon, the song says, we'll be going to see the king. But oh God, we know that soon and very soon you will be coming to get us. So God, yeah. until then, I pray that you will keep us strong and faithful. And oh God, I ask that you will bless each and everyone in this room even now. And Lord, as we are about to go our separate ways, oh God, never from your presence. May you be with us. May you walk with us. May you talk with us, oh God. May you sleep with us. May you just wrap us up in your arms of love and mercy. And oh God, when all is said and done, oh God, we can run to you and you shall save us in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 What a friend we have in Jesus. That we can take all our grief and pain to him to bear. What a privilege we have that we can go to you, God, in prayer, in the name of your son, Jesus. Lord, as I petition your throne this evening, who am I? I am not worthy. But there is one who gave up his life for us who are worthy. And in his name, I bow before you. 
Amen. Lord, this moment I place every minister before you. You call them, Lord, in such a time like now to do your work. Lord, we know the enemy is at their heel. And so, Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit will wrap them up, will tangle with them, that they will not slide away, dear Lord, but they will remember the commitment that they have made to win soul for your kingdom and to live according to your will. Loving Lord, I put every minister before you at this moment, their family, their Lord, that you will be with them, you will strengthen them, you will provide for them, their Lord, and they will seek you daily, minutely, and hourly. Lord, at this moment, I put every leader of your church or this entire universe before you, Lord, that we will search ourselves, Lord, and none of us will be the Simon before conversion. None of us will be Judas entirely that we do not come back to you. We've gone in such a stray in ourselves that we do not recognize that we need you. And so, Lord, we last hope when the moment has come. Lord, we ask for your divine strength. We ask that you will help us not to look down on others, but to look upon them with the love that you have looked upon us with. So many times, Lord, as leaders, we fail in so many different ways. Your simply may be, Lord, we fail. But, Lord, the love that you have for us is so mighty, so everlasting. It cannot question, dear God. And so you still have mercy upon us. Help us, Lord, to show love and compassion on those who are weak, those who need love, those who need compassion. Help us to recognize, Lord, that you have said to us, if we love you, keep your commandment, dear God. Your commandment of love we need to cherish and to keep with us, dear God. And so we ask that we will Throw it out on others. Throw it out on those who we come in contact with, dear Father. Help us to develop the characteristic of Mary. Help us to have the mind of Mary that even when it seems way out of our hand, Lord, we go to the extent to reach out unto others, Heavenly Father. Mm -hmm. Lord, we pray that you will remove doubt from us. You will remove negligent from us, especially in such a time like now, Lord. Help us to focus upon you. Lord, we pray for each and every one who is online at this moment, Lord. We could have a wise doing other thing, Lord. We are not perfect while we are here, but through your Holy Spirit, and bring us together to strengthen us. For you have said in your word, anywhere one and two are gathered, touching anything concerning you, you are in the midst. And so tonight, Lord, I thank you for such a privilege to be a part of such a group, Heavenly Father, to be more stronger in you, dear Lord. I just want to lift up everyone before you and I ask for your divine mercy. I ask for your divine strength and I pray that you will be with everyone. Be with Pastor Lord who put this group together, Lord. I pray that you will strengthen him in every way and you will rebuke the enemy from around him, dear God, protecting his family, Lord. I place them, continue to provide for each and every one of us. Oh, simply it is, Lord. Let us be grateful and thankful to you this moment, oh great God of heaven, what we fail of ask you, what we fail of giving thanks for, we know that you are a never failing God. Mm. Nothing is impossible to you. So we ask dear Lord in your own time and in your time of season to us, you will grant it unto us for we seek it in no other name, but in the name of your loving son, Jesus Christ, we pray, amen. 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 Words of our mouth, meditation of our hearts. Oh, Lord. Amen. Thank you guys so much. Thank you so much. For, we went way over tonight. But um, thank you so much for the discussion. It was very good. Yes. Well worth it. 
And I pray God's blessings upon you, our viewers. Thank you so much for joining us. Join us again this Saturday morning, Sabbath, for our worship service starting at 9.30. And uh, one of these days you will hear from Brother Oth Neil. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk to a youth leader. Probably one of these days, my friend, you will probably close out one of our vests. Elder Taylor, it's your month. Uh, yes. you know, there, there's a Vesper thought coming from someone <laughs> yes. on the international shore. So we'll talk a little bit more about it. Uh, he sent me a link the other day, he was preaching somewhere else, and thank you for that. He's a great guy. We appreciate your goodness. Thank, thank you for taking care of him, Sister Livingston uh, and Mom. Uh, thank you for being there. And Elder Taylor, thanks for joining us. Uh, Elder Bean, thanks for joining us. Sister Shippy, yes, thanks for joining awesome. us as well. Sister Clark, who is somewhere in the background, but all our viewers, we will keep praying for you. And please keep praying for us as well. And we'll see you on Sabbath morning. By the way, one more thing. Coming soon, and this is breaking news. Uh, nobody else knows about this yet, but starting in October, we're going to be having a weekend uh, type uh, hour of power. Okay, so it's going to be Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night. For one hour, we're going to have a special guest speaker coming in, and we're going to be praying together, singing together, praising the Lord together. We look forward to it. So start planning to invite your friends. Start planning to invite your friends and your neighbors, <clears throat> like what Sister Richardson is doing. Send a link to your neighbors. Let them just watch and encourage them to be a part of what we're doing, and you never know what the Lord will do in their Amen. life. It was quite Amen. uplifting. Uh, everyone, Sister Shippy, thank you as well. Yes. Uh, may God bless you and uh, see you again pretty soon. Come yes. back. Amen. Mm -hmm. Good night, everyone. Yes. Have a good rest of the week. everybody. Thank you. Uh, All right. I see you okay, Sabbath I'll evening on the west side. Yes, I'll be on West Jamaica next, uh, next Sabbath evening. I saw yeah. you um, Sabbath gone down by the west side. I remember you were asking them to pray for the gentlemen, even though they come out of one state. Yes. You were asking, let's pray for them yes. so that the enemy will not attack them in different forms. Exactly. You're right. Thank yes. you. Keep praying. Keep yes. praying. May God bless you. All Thank right. you, Pastor. Take care.